Hey everyone, in today's video, I'll be going over my Holy Artillery build. This setup is just monstrous. Not only do you throw out a crazy amount of damage, but you can also block hits like they were nothing. You're literally a tank. You have a cannon of a weapon and really strong protection. Don't forget to subscribe for more weekly content. I also have a Discord setup for anyone looking for more people to play with. The link to that and other Elden Ring related videos will be in the description down below. Alright guys, let's dive into the build starting off with the weapons, and for that I'm going with Silurio's Tree. It's a great spirit so it's going to have really good range, physical damage, and it comes with a nice bonus of holy damage. So because it deals holy damage, I'm going to be using the Sacred Scorpion charm that increases our holy damage by an extra 12%. Now the only downside to the weapon is it does attack pretty slow because again, it's a huge spear. But the main reason I'm going with it is because of its special attack that basically acts like a missile. And there's two different variations of it. If you just tap the special attack button, your character will slam the weapon into the ground doing a little explosion in front of you. But if you hold the special attack button, your character then charges the weapon to throw that explosion right in someone's face. And it deals a lot of damage as well. The range on it's not too bad, so you won't have to be right in front of someone to land it. On top of that, the attack moves really fast after you launch it, so you're gonna land this almost every time with little to no problem. And because you have to charge the attack up, I'm also using Godfrey's Icon. It just increases the damage of charged special attacks by 15%, so now it's even more punishing when this lands. Alright, let's move on to how we're going to absorb crazy amounts of damage. And for that, we're going to need the Fingerprint Shield. Even after it got nerfed, this thing is still a literal stone wall. Physical attacks drain next to no stamina, and it has really good protection against the elements. I made a full on tank build with this, so if you're interested in trying that out, I'll put a link in the description down below. That setup also hits like a truck. But let's get back to this setup. With its Ash of War, I'm going with no skill, just so we can use the Great Spear special attack in an instance and not worry about juggling the shield around. You could use Barricade if you really want to go all out on the tank part, like you won't lose any stamina at all when this Ash of War is activated. Highly not recommended, but you can change this really easily. Now, the Shield and Great Spear weigh a ton, and you'll probably want some nice armor to go with it. So I'm also using the Great Jar's Arsenal. It increases our max equip load by 19%, which is so helpful for this setup or any heavy builds in general. It's definitely needed if you want to save some points from Endurance. Along with the Great Spear and Shield, there's one more weapon that's more like a bonus weapon. It's not needed at all for this build, but it's just really fun and pretty effective as well. It being the Cypher Pada. It's a fist styled weapon that scales with faith and only deals holy damage. The reason I added it to this setup is because it had zero weight to it, so I figured hey, why not just throw it in? It's the complete opposite to the Great Spear, doing less damage but hits a lot faster. I don't know if it's just me, but it feels like it swings much faster than any of the other fist weapons. Let me know if you guys see the same thing or if I'm just going a little crazy. Its special attack is actually good as well. Your character just thrusts forward with an unblockable attack. So even if you're fighting someone that's hiding behind a shield, it's not going to do much for them. But using it with our shield though works so well for counterattacking, just because of how fast it hits. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend this for boss fights, but it's a nice little option to have a different playstyle. And for our last talisman that actually helps out with both of these weapons is the Shard of Alexander. It increases all special attack damage by a flat 15%. So now we have the Shard of Alexander, Godfrey's Icon, and the Sacred Scorpion Charm all increasing our damage. This is why I call it the Holy Artillery build, because Siluria's special attack is going to be hitting for around 2000 plus damage. Yet we still have one more way of increasing our damage and that's with the Flask of Wondrous Physic. You'll want to use the Holy Shrouding tier that increases Holy damage by 20% and the Strength Crystal Knot that increases our strength by 10 levels for some extra physical damage. Now let's go over how to maximize this build. So when you see your target in the distance, you'll want to get within a medium range to use your special attack. If your target survives and gets close to you, you have two different ways to play it out. You can either keep the shield up and slowly poke away at his health, or you can go for counter attacks which do more damage and break their stance, leading to a critical hit or if you want to be overkill and use your special attack and throw that right in their face. 
it does do a bit more damage than landing a critical, and it just looks like a pure execution. Along with everything I've mentioned, let's take a better look at the armor. With the helmet, I'm just using the basic knight helmet. Literally the first thing that comes to everyone's mind when they think of a knight. With the rest of the armor, it's all pieces from the Mausoleum Knights set. I don't know why, but I just really like the ornaments that come from its back. I think it just fits the holy style builds in general. Alright guys, now we're finally at the minimum stats required. So you'll need at least 48 strength, 13 dex, and 20 faith to use the shield and great spear. If you want to use Cypher's Pada as well, then you'll need 30 faith, which isn't so bad because after you reach the minimum stats required, you'll want to constantly split your points between strength and faith to increase your damage. I'm also going to put links in the description down below for all the items I'm using, if you want more information on them and where you can find them for yourselves. That's everything for today's video. I'd like to give a big thanks to the members of my channel for supporting me on my videos and the future ones to come. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.